The first area that we will focus on is the back arm. We start with the back arm because a good rhythmic throwing pattern with the back arm will naturally develop timing and rhythm with the footwork. The arm is where the throwing motion is felt and so it makes sense to perfect it first and allow the other parts to build off of that perfect throwing motion. Perfection at the back arm is simple and straightforward. Simply learn to turn the elbow up and then turn the elbow down to the ball while keeping the elbow bent throughout the entire motion. One, two. Also the hand should remain in nearly the same place they started at the shoulder with the palm facing the pitcher. And that's all there is to about 90% of the work. Now let's learn about the easiest way to do this. There is a single long bone in your upper arm called the humerus you need to become keenly aware of how to lift and lower that bone as well as how to effectively rotate or turn that bone during your hitter's throw. Correctly lifting, lowering, and rotating this bone will complete nearly all of the movement needed during the critical 1-2 phases of the back arm. All of this activity takes place at the shoulder joint. There should be minimal activity at the other two joints of the back arm, the elbow and the wrist, during the critical one two phases of the back arm. So your goal is simple. Learn how to effectively lift, lower, and turn the long bone in the upper arm and minimize activity at the other two joints, the elbow and the wrist. So we want a lot of activity at that shoulder joint as we lift, lower, and rotate that bone. We should be loose and relaxed at the shoulder joint and have a great deal of rhythm there. And then we just simply have to keep the back elbow bent and keep the hands and bat in virtually the same place throughout the critical one, two phases of the back arm. Only at three will the back arm begin to extend and then the hands and wrists work to finish the throw.